been reserved for the king's pleasure. Therefore the king's portion is reserved for you. A prepared position awaits you with the king of kings sitting at the head of the table. He desires that you sup with him in the presence of your enemies. By accepting his personal invitation, your needs are met, the desires of your heart fulfilled, and to top it off you will receive the exceeding abundant above all you can ask for or even think of. Imagine that. The more you understand the king's heart, without a shadow of a doubt, you will begin to make more room for heaven's treasures. Welcome to King's Portion. This is Catherine Joy Foster. And the theme of our program today is Tsunami Blessing Inside and Out. And this is part 58. We are going to address the topic of freedom. In Psalm 146 division, the seventh verse says that God is the one who executed judgment for the oppressed. And then at the end of that verse, it says, he looses the prisoners. It is not that he's just loosening you from being in prison, but then the destination can be seen in Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter and the 14th verse. And it says, out of prison, he cometh to reign. God does not want you to be enslaved. This is what Jesus says in John, the eighth chapter, the 36th verse from the King James Version. If the son therefore make you free, he shall be free indeed. So he's saying here that freedom is a part of your makeup. It is in your DNA. Then in Luke, the fourth chapter, the 18th and 19th verses, from the voice translation, this is what Jesus read in the synagogue that day, which is a replica of Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. And this is what Jesus said. The Spirit of the Lord, the eternal one is on me. Why? Because eternal designated me to be his representative to the poor, to preach good news to them. He sent me to tell those who were held captive, that they can now be free and to tell the blind that they can now see. He sent me to liberate those held down by oppression. In short, the spirit is upon me to proclaim that now is the time. This is the jubilee season of the eternal one's grace. He just removed the time frame from later to right now. We can have favor with God. We can have favor with others, but God can also give us favor with the enemy. And that could be feigned obedience or unfeigned obedience, but still all without any compromise from our side. In 2 Kings, the 25th chapter, the 27th through the 30th verses, from the voice translation shows how the Babylon's king released Judah's king from prison. So Judah means praise. The king of Babylon did this the same year he inherited the throne. And the king of Babylon was good to Jehoiakim. And he gave him the honorable throne that was higher than any other thrones of other kings who were held captive in Babylon, Jehoiakim removed his prison garments and put on new clothes. He ate his meals with the king every day for the rest of his life. The king also gave him a stipend on a daily basis for the rest of his life. What is showing that you cannot enslave praise. In fact, there are spores of war. You can find them in Psalm 111th division, the fifth and the sixth verses from the King James Version, it says, 
And this is God who has given meat. That meat is prey. And to him that fear him, he will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has shewed his people the power of his works that he might give them the heritage of the heathen. So that means that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Why? Because you can't enslave the praise. We want to show you a similar story from Acts, the 16th chapter, the 19th through the 26th verses from the King James Version. And this is when Paul and Silas cast out the demon that was in the lady who was from the demonic who was trying to entrap them. And after they did, and her masters could not make any more money from her, they took Paul and silence and captured them and they drew them into the marketplace and to the rulers and brought them to the magistrate saying these men these jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive neither to observe being romans and the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrate rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them and when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who have received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison, and made their feet fast in stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, and they sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. What's happening here is that when you see that great earthquake, that was the demonstration of the works of God, which we would call the tsunami blessing. But what happens when they praised? They pray so even every prisoner could hear they praise to God. God's response is like this. God inhabits the praises of his people. He is enthroned as king at the sound of your praise to him for who he is. And he responded to them showing that you can't enslave praise. Let's also look at Psalm 149th Division because you have to be able to see that you were created to praise him. And it says, praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises to him with their timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people, and he will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints, which includes you. Praise ye the Lord. Can't you see that you can't be enslaved when you choose to praise God for who he is? So what message would we like to leave with you today? There are some who are enslaved, but they don't know they're entangled or that they can ever be emancipated. Some have insatiable appetites to return to bondage over and over again because life under the slave master appears to be the better way. Still, there are some that have been released but choose to sit bound in heavy yokes around their necks because they offer little or no resistance to change that they can truly reign. But then there are countless others who come out of prison to reign. They walk at liberty and they lead captivity captive. They recognize Jesus, release them from bondage. 
so they reign in life. And let that be you and say, I am free because Jesus have made me free. I'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. Please plan to stay in tune for the entire program today. The Catherine Joy Foster Music Ministries is a 21st century multimedia marketplace ministry. In your discovery, you will find the power of God present to go where you are, to take you where Jesus is, raising you up, repairing you, restoring you, so that you can be as Jesus is in this world. Now available for workshops, banquets, conferences, webinars, concerts, prayer meetings. You can call area code 216-486-8615, extension 1. Again, that's area code 216-486-8615, extension 1. Proud to be an advertiser for King's Portion Web Radio. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. Now, there are many who have been enslaved, but they don't know they have been entangled or that they can ever be emancipated. There are some who have insatiable appetites to return to bondage over and over again because the life under the slave master appears to be the better way. Still, some have been relieved but choose to sit bound in heavy chains around their necks because they offer little or no resistance to change that they could really reign. But then there are countless others who come out of prison to reign. They walk at liberty and they lead captivity captive. They recognize Jesus released them from bondage. So they reign in this life. Say, I am free. We want to look at Isaiah, the ninth chapter the first through the seventh verses from the Living Bible. And this shows the prophecy that was laid before Jesus came into the earth. It shows just who he is and the freedom that he was bringing. So it says, nevertheless, the time of darkness and despair shall not go on forever, though soon the land of Zebulun and Neptili will be under God's contempt and judgment. Yet in the future, these very lands, Galilee and northern Transjordan, where lies the road to the sea, will be filled with glory. The people who walk in darkness shall see a great light, a light that will shine on all those who live in the land of the shadow of death. For Israel shall again be great, filled with joy, like that of reapers when the harvest time has come, and like that of men dividing up the plunder they have won. For God will break the chains that bind his people and the whip that scourges them, just like he did when he destroyed the vast host of the Midians by Gideon's little band. In that glorious day of peace, there shall be no longer the issuing of battle gear, no more the blood-stained uniforms of war, all such will be burned. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and these shall be his royal titles, wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. His ever-expanding peaceful kingdom will never end. He will rule with perfect fairness and justice from the throne of his father David. He will bring true justice and peace to all the nations of the world. This is going to happen because the Lord of heaven's armies has dedicated himself to it. So you can see this is God's plan that he prophesied about Jesus. He says, I'm going to overthrow confusion through the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In fact, his influence is going to be so overpowering that the tide of the battle have turned in favor to the kingdom of God. Now, you'll see that confusion is the weapon used against the enemy forces. It's that ambush that's so intense that the enemy must succumb to defeat. So you can see in Isaiah 9, 4, it says, For thou have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff 
of his shoulder and the rod of his oppressor as a day of Midian. So this, you'll find that Gideon was facing a seven-year back-to-back defeat where the enemy was wiping them out. But because the Lord broke the burden and the rod of the oppressor and removed the staff off the shoulder, they were able to be free. So when you see that word broken in Hebrew, it means it was caused to break down, to prostrate. It was caused to be broken down by violence or by confusion or fear, but it was abolished. Now we want to look at Jesus' ministry in Acts, the 10th chapter, 38th verse. And it says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good in healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Oppression means that someone is trying to exercise dominion against you. But it says that when the anointing is present, when the dunamis power is present, and when the, the Holy Spirit is present, the anointing of God will be present to do the works of God. Let's see what that means for you and I. Because we can see it in Jesus' ministry. But what does that mean for us? When we look in Romans, the 8th chapter, the 1st through 11th verse, it shows where we stand. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law is sin and death. For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son, Jesus, in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So it said, once you are saved, you have the Holy Spirit in you that's resident. We want to make sure we're keeping him there because those scriptures I just read named you and I as recipients of the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. So it's the same presence the same power that equates to us being able to do the same things that Jesus did. And that is ministering freedom to all those who are bound by heavy chains. So we see here that there is another verse to show us that what is the source of our freedom. And in Isaiah, the 10th chapter, the 27th verse reads like this. And it came to pass. In that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So we see here that the anointing is what causes the yoke to be destroyed. That yoke of bondage is destroyed. And what does that word destroyed mean? It means that the anointing is on you so that you have not only authority, but the power to bind that yoke from being around your neck. So because it can't be around your neck, you are free. And that yoke lost the battle because it can't do what it thought it could do. On our program today, 
that you are going to enjoy the music of D. White. Now let's hear him as he sings Army of God. And then we'll know that as the army of God, oppression can't stay. And God promises in Isaiah 14, 6, that he who smote you can hinder you no more. There'll be no more sorrow, pain, trouble, unrest, or hard service. So let's hear army of God and take your place so you can abide in the freedom that Jesus paid for. I'll be right back. Strong in the Lord with the power of his mind. I got his armor on and I'm ready to fight. I stand against Satan in this battle with sin. Against all evil forces of this world we live in. No weapon formed against me. I am a threat to the enemy. I am clothed with the blood of the Lamb. I'm a branch on a vine. I'm more than a conqueror I'm a soldier In the army I am a soldier In the army of the Lord I'm a soldier In the army I am a soldier In the army of the Lord I have my waist right with the belt of truth I got my feet prepared for the gospel of peace And I got my breastplate of righteousness I got my shield of faith to protect me from the wicked one. No weapon form to get speed. I am a threat to the enemy. I am clothed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm a branch on a vine, and I'm more than a conqueror. I'm a soldier. on the web at blog.kingsportionlive.com. That's blog.kingsportionlive.com. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. There are some who are enslaved, but they don't know they are entangled or that they can even be emancipated. And there are some who have insatiable appetites to return to bondage over and over again. Life under the slave master appears to be the better way. Still, there are some who have been released but choose to sit bound in heavy chains around their necks because they offer little or no resistance to change so they can reign. But then there are countless others, we believe you are one, who come out of prison to reign. They walk at liberty and lead captivity captive. They recognize Jesus release them from the bondage so they can reign in this life as kings. So you see here that Jesus has already outlawed the yoke by his finished works. So we see another anointing that rests on you, the miraculous power 
of Holy Spirit upon you. You bind that yoke with the word of God. So you can see the spirit of God and the word of God working together. Now we can introduce you to another word. It is Shabar in Hebrew. And it's going to appear in the next four scriptures that I read. And actually in Hebrew, Shabar means to burst as in giving birth. In Isaiah 14, 5, it says, The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. So that word to bring forth because it's burst forth, giving you breakthrough. So this is the miraculous works of God reproducing your offspring along with your release from captivity. So now you see that the fight is not just against you nor your current positioning. It is truly about your promised potentiality. The battle is actually centered on what you are carrying in your womb. So refuse to allow the enemy to abort your offspring. Now the next scripture you'll find in the same chapter, Isaiah 14, but now in the 29th verse. And it says, Rejoice not thou, Ho, Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. So in this case, this is a judgment from the Lord because this nation is an enemy of the Lord. Now, this time, the prophecy announced that the offspring that would be reproduced would be fiercer than the freedom that they were currently experiencing. Then let's look at two more examples. One is in Jeremiah, the 28th chapter, the second verse. And it says, Thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Well, what difference this is? Because this was not the word of the Lord. This is from a false prophet, Hananiah, who willfully concocted this message. So he's posing as a prophet when he spewed out this message to God's people, which was a lie. And not only that, the people of God believed that it was true. So what happens, steeped in his confusion, he felt very comfortable in releasing this word openly. Now, let's look at this, that God is extremely right, Satan is extremely wrong, and anyone stuck in the middle is extremely confused. One may be resolved that something right is wrong and something that is wrong is right. Another clear indication of confusion lies in the following definition, to be unclear in mind and intent, to mistake one thing for another. Why? Because that party cannot discern the noticeable difference between the truth and the lie. So what happens here is that God does not allow it to stand, but because Jeremiah does not know that this word comes from Lord, he inquires of the Lord. So in verses 12 through 14 from the King James Version, this is what it says. Then the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the prophet after that Hananiah the prophet had broken the yoke from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus said the Lord, Thou hast broken the yokes of wood, but thou shalt make for them yokes of iron. Thus said the Lord of host the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. And I have given him the beast of the field also. So where Jeremiah wasn't sure, he went and he asked God. And in his quest to know whether it was God, God did judge this word as a lie. He not only that, but he judged Hananiah, the false prophet, a sentence against him that the seed that Hananiah sold reproduced his own death sentence and he died. We also want to look at a promise 
of what God gives us when we have faith, shame, and confusion. And in Isaiah, the 61st chapter, the seventh verse says, for your shame, you shall receive double. And for your confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be upon them. So this word Babylon in Hebrew means confusion. The archaic definition for confusion is a compromise between extremes, a middle course, a blend that adjusts the quality. One of the current definitions imply that the mixture causes something to fade, that is to lose brilliance or loudness or brightness gradually. The first thing that comes to mind would be the glory of God. Whenever God's presence is diminished or denied having access, so is his glory. But God promises recompense. And that devil portion you could see in Isaiah 61, 7 means that they will receive the rights of the firstborn and the double portion blessing that is upon the firstborn. And seeing that Jesus has made us sons of God, therefore heirs of God, he has also made us joint heirs with Jesus. So we get Jesus' portion and that qualifies you to receive the up grade and that upgrade makes you free and keeps you free now you walk at liberty i'll be right back after this message from my sponsor i was just standing there basking in the sun and all of a sudden i was soaking wet there wasn't a sign in the sky so i was unprepared without an umbrella but in the end it just didn't matter i loved every minute of it i knew i was living under open heavens it really does give new meaning to being overtaken by blessing not a dry spot this is fran the fan of h-d-o-r uh-oh here comes the rain again been listening to King's Portion Live with web host Catherine Joy Foster. Thanks for staying tuned to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. There are some who are enslaved, but they don't know that they're entangled. Or if they do know, they don't even know that they can be emancipated. And then are some with insatiable appetites to return to bondage over and over again life under the slave master appears to be the better way still there are some have been released but they still sit in their heavy yokes around their necks because they offer little or no resistance to change knowing that they could reign as king but then there are still countless others who come out of prison to reign they walk at liberty and lead captivity captive they recognize Jesus released them from bondage so they reign in this life as kings. We're going to look at the words of Jesus in Matthew, the 16th chapter, the 13th through the 19th verses from the Amplified Version, the classic edition. And it reads, now when Jesus went into the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they answered, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you yourselves say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Then Jesus answered him, happy, blessed, fortunate to be envied are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood, men have not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. So he's showing this is how you're going to get the revelation that's in the kingdom of God from heaven. It's not going to come from flesh and blood. And then he says, and I'll tell you, Peter, and he's saying, Petros, a large piece of rock. And on this rock, Petra, a large rock like Gibraltar, I will build my church and the gates of hell, the powers of the infernal region shall not overpower it or be strong to its detriment or hold out against it. And then this is what Jesus says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you bind, declare 
to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already bound in heaven and whatever you loose declare lawful on earth must be what is already loosed in heaven. What Jesus is saying is that we have to have a clear picture of what heaven looks like because that is where we get the vision of what earth should be like. So he did not leave us without power and authority. And when we look at those words, bind and bound, they are identical. And they mean that you're buying, you're tying up, you're winding them. Then on the other hand, when using loose or loosed, that means to break up, to dissolve, destroy, to melt, to put off. So they are distinct. So they're like releasing on one hand if it's loosing and then binding if you are arresting it. We are able to then penetrate the darkness and paralyze and neutralize any onslaught that's against us in anything at any time. And the relationship with God gives us the revelation so then we know that we can incapacitate any confusion. Now this is what Jesus is showing us in Matthew, the 18th chapter, the 18th and 19th verses. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, and he's still using the same principles of binding and loosing there, but this is what he adds in verse 19. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. So he's saying that when you're agreeing on earth, can be seen as synergy, which means that two together is greater than if they operated by themselves. So he's showing you that we can have the class action suit against the kingdom of darkness when we're working together and at least with two. Let's look in Esther, the seventh chapter, the eighth verse. And it says, and as the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. So we have to look at this. What happened there? Haman was trying to extinguish all the truths by law. And this was a demonic plan that the enemy has put in place. But God turned it around because he distinguished the Jews instead and he removed the burden and the yoke off his people. So the same gallows that Haman had intended for Mordecai, now he was the one that got put to death. Let's look at how real-time faith works in this particular situation. So we being like the king in the earth, this is what happens. It is as the word went out of our mouth, Haman, and the word for Haman means commotion. Haman was hung. You have to know this. Every word that comes out of your mouth, when it comes out of your mouth in faith, that there is faith being activated on each word said. It is not waiting to the end of the sentence or the phrase. It is obeying your command because it is your servant to do that. So it does not lay dormant your faith, but you activate it to such a way that you can get the same results that Jesus did in the world. That you can get the same results that God did when he was creating the world, he still haven't finished. And then you can get the same results that this King Xerxes did in Esther. You are God's representative. And that bondage, that oppression, that yoke has to be removed. And so you can get the same results that Jesus did. And he even promised greater works because we are believing God to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living have been authorized. Now on our program today, you're gonna to enjoy the music again of D. White. Now let's welcome him as he sings rain. And I'll be right back. Take 
Staying tuned to King's Portion. Again, the thing about our program is the tsunami blessing inside and out. Now, there are some who are enslaved, but they don't know that they have been tangled or that they even can be free if they are new at all. And there are some who have insatiable appetites to return to bondage over and over again because life under the slave master appears to be the better way. Still, there are some who have been released, but choose to sit bound in heavy chains around their necks because they offer little or no resistance to change. But there are still countless others, we hope that's you, who come out of prison to reign. They walk at liberty and lead captivity captive. They recognize Jesus, release them from bondage so that they can reign in this life. You gotta say that I 
am free. Now let's look at a published definition for the word confuse from the 1828 Webster's Dictionary. It means, number one, to mix or blend things so that they cannot be distinguished. Number two, it means to disorder. Number three, it means to perplex, to render indistinct. Number four, it means to throw the mind into disorder, to cast down or bash, to cause to blush, to agitate by surprise or shame, to disconcert. Now with that definition, we want to look at what it says about God. In 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, the 33rd verse from the King James Version, it says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. That word peace means God is set at one. He is single-minded and single-hearted. He is not two-faced. So what we are saying is that who is the author of confusion? Satan. And what God's telling us here, how to get his wisdom. Because the wisdom of God and the wisdom of the world are vastly different. They're not even going in the same direction. And it says in James, the first chapter, the fifth verse, it says that if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. So he's saying, ask, you will receive. He'll give it to you in abundance, and he's not going to put you down because you ever asked. And then in James, the third chapter, the 16th through the 18th verse shows the distinction between the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. First, they name the wisdom of this world in verse 16. It says, for where envying and strife is, there's confusion in every evil work, which means that you will not be able to make the right distinction because you can't see the distinction that should be made. But then in verse 17 and 18, it shows you what the wisdom of God looks like. And it says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, peaceful, gentle, easy being treated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So this Wisdom is always looking to make peace without any compromise how we operate in the kingdom of God. Now, let's look at what Jesus says about abiding in freedom. Because you can see the wisdom of God will help you to make each decision so that it will always line up with what God has for you and it always will refuse what Satan would want you to choose. This is what Jesus says in John, the 8th chapter, the 31st and the 32nd verse. This is what Jesus says. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So he's saying, continue in his word. Don't stop looking at his word. Let the word abide in you. This is what I think about the word of God. That when you hear somebody say it, it's just like an aroma of a meal. But when you see it, you hear it, and it comes out of your mouth, that is a meal. That is a meal that's going to cause you to be full and fulfilled. And that is is the meal that will come back to you because it is nourishing you in what Jesus will want you to be free. And he goes on to say, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Now there are three scriptures that Jesus releases to show us that we can have Holy Spirit as what Jesus calls Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth abiding on the inside of us. The first one is John, the 14th chapter, the 16th through the 18th verses from the King James Version. It says, and I 
will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither know him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So he's saying that I've been comforting you all along, but I can only be in one place at one time. But this is the Holy Spirit who can be in everyone at the same time and bring in the comfort that Jesus is comforting them with as well. And this is what he says, that he would not leave us comfortless. That means that you would not be as an orphan without father or mother or guide or without a teacher. He's going to come to us through Holy Spirit. Wow. Can you phantom how great God's love is from that verse? And then it says in John, the 15th chapter, the 25th through the 27th verse, again from the King James Version, just as Jesus. He said, but this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in the law. They hated me without a cause. But when the comforter has come, this Holy Spirit, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. So he's showing the oneness. He's showing that they are congruent. He's showing that they operate on the same side, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. And the only thing that you're going to get from them is the truth. And then let's look at the third indication of the Spirit of truth being in us and around us and with us forever. In John, the 16th chapter, the 12th through the 14th verses, it says this, and these are the words of Jesus. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that will he speak. And he will shew you things to come. He will glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall shew it unto you. Let's look at 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, the 16th through the 18th verses from the King James Version. And it says, nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. That means that when we turn to the Lord is because we can see as we should be seen, which means we receive the revelation so we can see into the spirit world. And this is what it says. Now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. But we all with open faith, beholding at the glass, the glory of the Lord are changed to the same image from glory to glory, even by the spirit of the Lord. So what we're saying is that you're only looking at the glory of the Lord in a mirror. So because you will become just like what you're looking at, he said, you're going to become the glory of the Lord. So he says, rise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. So show it with that revelation, you'll be able to do a revolution because you look like him and you act like him. And this is what Jesus said to the woman at the well in John 4, 24. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and and in truth. We're also going to look at 1 John, the fourth chapter, the first through the seventh verses from the King James Version. And it reads, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby Know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Because this is the spirit of the Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. 
Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, for he knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby you know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. So what he's saying that when you're hearing something and you don't know that it's of God or not, then you challenge the thought just like you saw that Jeremiah did. But you challenge the thought. He says, can you recognize God as sending Jesus in the flesh as Savior and Lord? And you says that if you can, you can speak. But if you can't, then I plead the blood against you and you will not be able to utter that again. Now let's look at 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, the first to the 14th verses from the Living Bible, because this is showing us how to move into working with Holy Spirit all the time so that we will know how to work the spirit of truth against the spirit of error. So we will not entertain any errors, lies, or deception at any time. And it says, and now what about the coming again of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to meet him? Please don't be upset and excited, dear brothers, by the rumor that the day of the Lord has already begun, but you hear of people having visions and special messages from God about this or letters that are supposed to have come from me. Don't believe them. Don't be carried away and be deceived regardless of what they say for that day will not come until two things happen. First, there will be a time of great rebellion against God and then the man of rebellion will come, the son of hell, and he will defy every God there is and tear down every other object of adoration and worship. He will go in and sit as God in the temple of God, claiming that he himself is God. Don't you remember that I told you this when I was with you and now, and you know what is keeping him from being here already, for he can only come when his time is ready. As for the work this man of rebellion and hell would do when he comes, it is already going on but he himself will not come until the one who is holding him back steps out of the way then this wicked one will appear whom the lord jesus will burn up with the breath of his mouth and destroy by his presence when he returns this man of sin will come as satan's tool full of satanic power and will trick everyone with strange demonstrations and do great miracles. He will completely fool those who are on their way to hell because they have said no to the truth. They have refused to believe it and love it and let it save them. For God will allow them to believe lies with all their hearts. And all of them will be justly judged for believing falsehood, refusing the truth and enjoying their sins. But you have to say that will not be you. But it goes on to say, but we must forever give thanks to God for you, our brothers, loved by the Lord, because God chose from the very first to give you salvation, cleansing you by the work of Holy Spirit and by your trusting in the truth. Through us, he told you the good news. Through us, he called you to share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you know what? That could be you right now if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you can know him right now and come into the knowledge of the truth and have the spirit of truth to abide in you. Why don't you say this prayer with me? Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I recognize that I need to be saved. And I ask you to come into my heart 
and be the Lord and Savior of my life. I acknowledge the blood of Jesus as the saving grace of God that I can be free from sin and cease to exist to sin and live as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So I thank you for forgiving me of every sin and I thank you for being my savior and I thank you for your sacrifice that you made for me. And now I'm the newest creation in the body of Christ. And I say, all things have passed away and behold, all things are new. And I am free indeed. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, why don't you email us at info at kingsportionlive.com. That's info at kingsportionlive.com. And we'll send you some encouragement along the way. Now, let's return to the remaining portions of King's Portion Live after this message from our sponsor. We invite you to visit our new interactive website. Please log on to www.kingsportionlive.org. That's www.kingsportionlive.org. We believe that you will discover something that will speak to the royal blood in you. Thanks for staying tuned for the conclusion of King's Portion Live, which bears the theme, the tsunami blessing inside and out. Now, there are some who are enslaved, but they don't know they are entangled or that they even can be emancipated. There's some who have insatiable appetites to return to bondage over and over again because life under the slave master appears to be the better way. Still, there are some who've been released, but they sit bound in heavy chains around their necks because they offer little or no resistance to change. But there are countless others who come out of prison to reign. Let that be you. They walk at liberty and lead captivity captive. They recognize Jesus released them from bondage. So they reign in this life as kings and priests. Now we're going to give an example of God coming to release his people, Israel. In Psalm 107, the 10th through the 16th verse from the King James Version says, Such as sit in darkness in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness, and the shadow of death, and break their bands in sunder. Oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness and for the wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. So you can see how merciful God is. Also in Acts, the 21st chapter, and taken from the first and the 19th verses, this is showing just how hatred came against God and his apostles. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church, and he killed James the brother of John with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions, which is 16 soldiers of four groups each, to keep him, and intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. So he was heavily guarded. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him 
and a light shone in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him. And was not that it was true, which was done by the angel. But he thought he saw a vision. And when they passed the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out. He passed on through the street. And forth with the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety, it was a guarantee for him, that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod. And from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, Is his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they opened the door, they saw him and they were astonished. But he, beckoning unto them with his hand to hold their peace, declared to him how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go, show these things unto James and to his brethren. And he departed and went to another place. Now as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers what was become of Peter. When Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. And they were. See, that's letting you know that God is faithful to release you, but he will bind the enemy who has tried to bind you. There's some things that we have to remember about this for ourselves. Refuse to take your script from any contradiction. And this is what Hebrews, the 12th chapter, the third verse says, for consider Jesus that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, that you be wearied and faint in your mind. Jesus was looking at the joy and he could see no other joy, but giving God the family that he wanted, as well as you being part of that family. So he could deliver you from evil to good from bondage to freedom. Now, this is what we have to do here. Allow Holy Spirit to give us the word for each day. Set our hearts in position so we can get a right now word from Holy Spirit any time of day or night. And let Psalm 25, 12 through 14 from the Living Bible be a part of your daily life. This is where is the man who fears the Lord? God will teach him how to choose the best. He will live within God's circle of blessing and his children shall inherit the earth. Friendship with God is reserved for those who reference him. With them alone, he shares the secrets of his promise. God says this, before they call, I will answer. And while they were yet speaking, he will hear. You have to know that his eyes are for you and upon you to make sure that you can walk at freedom. So it shows that even though that the people were praying for Peter was still praying for him, they were not expecting the suddenly, but they were still praying for the release because they had hope. But God said, surprise, and he surprised them. So we have to remember the times that God has delivered us with the thought that we'll always be delivered from any bondage. Keep this in your mind. It's from Psalm 129, the vision. And it says, many a time and much have they afflicted me from my youth up. 
that Israel now say many a time, and such have they afflicted me from my youth up, yet they have not prevailed against me. The plowers plowed upon my back, and they made long their furrows. The Lord is uncompromisingly righteous. He has cut asunder the thick cords by which the wicked enslaved us. Let them all be put to shame and turned backward who hate Zion. Let them be as the grass upon the housetop with withers before it grows up, with which the mower fills not his hand, nor the binder of sheaves his bosom. While those who go by do not say, the Lord, the blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. This is the message we'd like to leave with you today. Psalm 62, 10 challenges us to not trust in oppression at all. Anybody who is trying to exercise dominion against you in any way. By adopting Jesus, finished work on Calvary, you will experience that the dominion Satan tried to exercise against you has already failed. When Jesus knocks on the door of your heart, you are the only one who can unlock it from the inside. That is the way to discover that you never have to remove any chains on your own. Whom the Son makes free is free indeed. In other words, freedom is embedded in your DNA. It is endless emancipation realized when Jesus Christ, your liberator, is really living as king in your heart so that you can live with him. You can live through him. This is Catherine Joy Foster for King's Portion, where we speak to the royal blood in you. You have been listening to the King's Portion with radio host Catherine Joy Foster. Today's podcast is available for download. Log on to blog.kingsportionlive.com or email info at kingsportionlive.com.